So guys, you remember when I made some videos at the beginning of the year about how Ripple is trying to corner all the markets that have to do with money transfer from countries to the other. And what they try to do is they try to grab what is going to be the hub of a particular area. So for instance, say in Asia, how you know Hong Kong and Singapore want to be the epicenter, basically controlling the transfer of money in that region, right? And how they want to get ahead of the whole blockchain sort of solution. Well, Ripple is basically the main go-to organization when it comes to this, right? They've basically got all of their approvals or their in-principle approvals as they are referred to because in those places, perhaps there haven't been explicit laws calling out the name Ripple or the XRP ledger specifically, but they have worked with Ripple executives and representatives in those countries, and they've attended Swell and you know given presentations, etc. Now, the hub of money transfer and inter-country money transfer in the Middle East is the UAE. There are other countries that are vying for the position, just like in Asia, you have you know Hong Kong, Singapore, perhaps to an extent, Japan also wants to get involved. In the Middle East, you have, of course, Saudi Arabia, you have Qatar, and of course, you have the UAE. Now, the UAE is the most significant because, of course, they've got Dubai and Abu Dhabi, which is why this is a, a quite an interesting thing. So, Ripple plans Durham-backed stablecoin launch in the UAE. So, we're going to go through this article, and I'm going to show you why they're able to do this in the first place, right? So basically, Ripple is generating buzz about a possible DRAM-backed stablecoin launch in the UAE, coinciding with its discussions around its upcoming RLUSD. The firm recently praised the UAE's progressive digital asset regulation framework, which encourages blockchain innovation and stablecoin integration. Okay, so that is the reason why they're able to do it. See, are you listening? This is what the United States is going to have to catch up with because Asia, the Middle East and parts of Africa, they are marching forward with positive legislation and regulations to encourage crypto to come to their part of the world, right? Ripple has maintained a strong presence in the Middle East with notable partnerships with such as National Bank of Abu Dhabi's adoption of its payment solutions. Okay, that's huge. With the UAE's regulation clarity, a Durham-backed stablecoin would align with Ripple's goal to support secure and efficient digital transactions. By tapping the UAE market, Ripple is surely making a big affair in the crypto business. Clear regulations fuel UAE's blockchain ambition. See, clear regulations, not Gary Gensler, SEC, kneecapping of regulations, not giving clear regulations and then suing people for not following the on provided rules, if you know what I mean. The UAE, on the other hand, is forward thinking, they're clear about what they want, and they're being positive about this technology because they realize the future is blockchain, the future is crypto, etc. The UAE central bank has introduced a solid regulatory framework that supports stablecoin use in its virtual assets transactions. This clarity positions the UAE as a leader in digital finance, creating an environment conducive to stablecoin adoption. For businesses in the UAE, a Durham-backed stablecoin could provide a faster, more cost-effective solution for cross-border payments, making it an attractive option for financial institutions. I'm going to link this article in the description if you want to go have a look. Also, if you remember, there is something happening similar to this also in Brazil, which I made a video about a few months ago. I've made so many videos about these things now, I can't remember which month I made what. But how is this thing even possible in the first place? Why does Ripple have the, not the authority, but how are they able to corner this market? That's because a few months ago, the DFSA approval unlocks Ripple's end-to-end -end payment services in the UAE, boosting Middle East operations. See, it says, Ripple, the leading provider of digital assets infrastructure, has secured in principle approval from the Dubai Financial Services Authority, the FSA, to expand its services from the Dubai International Financial Center. This milestone significantly strengthens Ripple's global footprint as a regulated entity, and it enables the introduction of seamless cross-border payment services, including Ripple Payments Direct RPD in the UAE. With this authorization, Ripple is set to roll out its enterprise-grade digital assets infrastructure to a broader customer base in the UAE. 
This expansion is aligned with Ripple's mission of providing businesses with faster, cost-effective, and more efficient cross-border payment solutions by combining robust regulatory compliance with ongoing investments in critical infrastructure components such as liquidity, best-in-class custody, and on-off ramps between fiat and digital assets. And then, you know, quotes Brad Garlinghouse. Again, this article will be linked in the description. But the whole point of this is this same sort of de facto sort of approval that they've got from the financial services in the UAE. They got something similar in Singapore, something similar in Hong Kong. I made a video about it months ago, like I said before. And these approvals that they're getting all over the place basically set them ahead of anybody else who's going to come and try and do the same thing. In fact, there's no other organization that has the clout, the reach that can do this anyway. So they clearly sort of are building themselves a little bit of a, an international monopoly when it comes to cross-border payments via digital currency. Not financial advice, your own research. There are trillions of dollars coming to the XRP ledger. It's only a matter of time before this thing all completely blows up. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.